Welcome back to the 167. We're here with the seven minute story from Chris Brown. Chris, how are you doing? Great. Hey, so today we're going to talk about something that recently happened in your life and some of the ways that God's working through that and uh, how he kind of helped you out in the situation, right? Right. All right. So take it away. Tell me a little bit about what happened. Well, the big story was COVID in our lives. Rich got COVID at the end of December and he had been sick. We thought, oh, it's another one of his respiratory things. Not a big deal. He progressively got worse. Finally, he said, it's time to go to the hospital. So I take him there, get to Overland Park and say, we think he has COVID. They take him and they say, you can't come in. And so I went and sat in the parking lot for about an hour or so while they did his rapid test to see if he was positive. I got a phone call. Yes, he is positive. I said, what do I do? They said, well, you go home. And I did drive all the way back thinking this is, I, I can't see him now. This is it. Um, I can talk to him. He still had his phone. I can talk to the doctors, but I can't see him or be with him. And so I was immediately put in two months or two, two weeks. It felt like two months of quarantine. And so that was a, I like to be alone. I like to have my alone time, but that was a little bit too much. So uh, during that time, uh, God was reminding me of verses, reminding me of songs, reminding me of times in the past when he had been with me and he had brought me through times when I just wanted to give up and said, God, I can't do this anymore. And he always brought me through that. So uh, he, he was there for me. I did have a whole lot of things to deal with. Uh, Rich's tax business was getting ready to start up for the season. And so his business associate was calling me saying, hey, now what do we do? That I don't know. So <laughs> we worked out a plan and then he was getting progressively worse. So at the end of the first week, um, the pulmonologist who'd been calling me every day said, we think he's a good candidate to go on the ventilator. And I thought at that time, everything that we've heard about the ventilators, if you go on one, that's a bad thing. You yeah, probably, you're probably not coming off. You're probably not gonna make it off. And so I had to, at that point, realize this is it. He could die and I might never physically see him again. And so I actually had to have the conversation with him because the pulmonologist said, well, do you guys have uh, like a DNR, anything like that? And we had talked about it, certainly, and we decided, well, we don't want machines keeping us alive. And then he said, well, you need to talk to him. <laughs> okay. So I basically said, this is what they are saying. They want to put you on the ventilator. Is What do you think? And he said, well, I want to fight. So I said, okay, that's what we'll do. So they put him on then. He had already given me his cell phone so that I could, it was getting too hard for him to answer phone calls. So I was trying to man manage his phone calls from tax clients, from his tax associate, from family members, texting to everybody and getting all kinds of texts and trying to, so that kind of helped keep me busy. But at the same time, there would be times of, it would just be overwhelming, like this is real, this is really happening to me and it, it could end really badly. And what if I lose everything? And God said, you will still have me because through the previous couple of years, he had been having me let go of stuff. Um, I'd been going through the house and get rid of this, get rid of that, and basically for a lot of reasons, but just that let go of things. And he was telling me that, you, yeah, everything could go, but I'm not going anywhere, and I never have. So that really helped me whenever it would start, the, the, just the panic would start, or the just be sobbing, you know, thinking, what is happening here? God was always there, and he always brought me back down. Well, and tell me a little bit about that, because I think it's either one of two things. I think that people either think that in times of crisis, Christians are these cold, you know, people where it's like, oh, it doesn't bother me, you know, it's totally fine, you know, like, I I don't care. Like, I've said that before, I'm like, I really don't care if I die. If, if it's my loved ones, yes. it bothers me, you know, and it's like going, but on the flip side of that, you know, we do, we feel real emotion. So tell me a little bit what that's like when you're talking about you're in this raw time but still believing that God's going to take care of you. What does that really feel like? That feels like times when you just, um, you're crying out like David did. I, I loved reading the Psalms. He's very open. He's very real about, he's saying, God, you have abandoned me. You know, I'm, I'm stuck out here. I, you're, where are you? And there were times when I did feel like that, that, you know, God, I know after being on the prayer team for 11 years, I've seen all the prayers that have come in and I thought, okay, I know what these people are going through, I thought, but now it's me. Now I'm going through it and now this could be it. So 
it was just the reality of this is where my faith becomes absolutely real. I've said all these things all my life, but now I'm actually living it. And I know because I have a history with God that he has always come through for me. It was never easy. There's been a lot of pain. There are a lot of things that I wish I had not done that I wish other people hadn't done, but through it all, God was still there and he doesn't change. So anything else that changes in my life, okay, but he's not gonna change on me. So I did have times when I was just sobbing, you know, crying like, God, I feel so abandoned, I feel so alone here. But he always, always reminded me that, remember when that happened? I'm still here. So you have that past, we're, yes. we're drawing our faith from our past wins with God and his faithfulness in, in our story. It's part of the story, it's part of the history. I have a history with God. And I have many, many stories where I wanted to, I, I just wanna say, God, I can't do this anymore. You're, uh, I'm done, you know, there's nothing left that I can give. But he was always able to say, look at it this way. And he would able to take me to a place where I could see things from a different perspective and say, okay, that's what's really going on. And that's one thing he's really good about too is helping me to see what's underneath all of this. This is what it looks like on the surface, but there's more underneath. And remembering who my enemy is, and it's not the people out there, it's Satan, and he wants to destroy me. And do I want to cooperate with him? No, I don't. Mm -hmm. So if if this is what it takes for me to have to do, then I will do it because I'm not going to give him what he wants. Yeah, I think a lot of times we, we tend to think that, like we're not in a battle. It's either God takes care of everything and clears our way and, you know, we'll never have another problem again or we're having problems, so it must be my fault rather yeah. than, no, you're in a battle, you have an enemy. Right. And that's um, when Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble, but I have overcome the world. He didn't promise that I would never have issues. He didn't promise that I would come to a life and death situation. His promise was that he would be there. So that's the main thing that I think that I got out of this whole situation. He helped me battle some of my fears, some of my worst fears, um, and showed me that, yes, I have you. And he even did a thing with, with Rich when Rich was finally able to go to work, and I drove him, and we were driving on 435, in a snowstorm and I was terrified because I hate 435. So we got to almost to Olathe or out of Olathe almost to the way station and a snowplow came next to us on the shoulder and blew sludge right in my windshield. I couldn't see. So I was driving blind and having a panic attack and saying, God, I can't see. And Rich very calmly held onto the steering wheel and said, I've got you, I'll steer, you just drive. You just keep going. And right at that moment, that was God showing me a physical example of what he had been doing all along. He kept telling me, I have you. So now I got to see in person somebody that's saying, I have you. We're going to make it home. You're going to be good. So, you know, you can't get more real than that. Him saying, this is, this is who I am. I will take care of you. Well, I'm so glad that Rich recovered. I'm so glad that yes. you guys got through that. Um, God was good. And we're going to talk to Rich about his story, but thank you so much for coming in and sharing yours. Thanks. All right. We'll see you guys next time.